Greetings, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Nagler, and I'm bringing you our Meta Center's nonviolence report for the second week of November. I'd like to point out uh, about our film, which is having a very good response. This film is called The Third Harmony, that uh, today and tomorrow it's screening at the African Human Rights Film Festival in Johannesburg. That's the furthest we've reached yet. I'm very happy about that. And all month long, we are the film of the month at Tricycle Magazine. So there should be good outreach there to Buddhist communities. And those of you who are one of them or have friends in Buddhist communities, let them know about Tricycle. Thank you. So now to the most critical problem uh, we are facing here in the States, 1,000 election experts, legal experts, have just signed a letter condemning the shameful attack on democracy as uh, outgoing President Trump continues his baseless uh, statements at the, the, about election fraud. This is very serious because it is stirring up uh, potentially violent groups. Now, it's, there was a very interesting article, I think it appeared just yesterday in Foreign Affairs, on how they are countering disinformation in Taiwan. Taiwan has had a big problem because they're inundated with news from China, which is, uh, you know, ranges from bias to outright faked. And uh, what they've decided to do is create some trusted resources with uh, correct information. So people have come to rely on these and that has been very successful in overcoming the effect of the political disinformation. So this sounds to me a lot like what the Buddha said and what we're always saying in nonviolence of uh, counter untruth with truth. You know? Don't go after each lie and say, hey, that's a lie, but just flood the world or you're part of it with uh, correct information. And uh, you know, it's, it's not like the economic law that says, bad money drives good money out of circulation. This is truth drives untruth out of circulation. Uh, so for those of us here in the States who want to uh, take some kind of steps, as usual, I want to mention the two main resources that are there for us. Choose Democracy, which has been offering trainings and choosedemocracy.us is where to look for that. And the other is hold the line and they, they have a guide, a pretty extensive document that's helped to design people to ensure that uh, we can prevent a uh, coup, which some people say that uh, is really being built up to. So uh, to move on from that crisis to some good news, uh, you may remember Governor Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan, uh, she survived the calls for a kidnapping recently. Who, who thought, whoever thought this would, would have come to this in the US. Anyway, she did something wonderful just now for the environment and it's being called a really, really big deal. And that is she moved to shut down a line five pipeline to protect the Great Lakes. This was a pipeline that was being uh, being upheld by Enbridge, that's the name of the company. And their statement is that Enbridge has imposed on the people of Michigan an unacceptable risk of a catastrophic oil spill in the Great Lakes that could devastate our economy and way of life. So moving around the world now, first with a couple of somewhat parallel episodes, we talked to you once before about the struggles that were going on in uh, Newfoundland, Canada, on the part on behalf of the Mekamaw people, Mekamak, Megamaw, that's sometimes pronounced. So they were struggling with a company called Clearwater, which was bought by General Foods. And uh, it was about fishing rights and lobster rights. And this struggle, which was getting nasty and uh, was becoming violent, and you know, indigenous First Nations people were not allowed to shop 
they were not being patron uh, served when they went into shops for vital supplies and so forth. But now it is taking a really, really interesting twist. And since the Mi'kmaq are part of a uh, large confederacy within the Mi'kmaq nation and also with Penobscot and many others in that part of the world, part of Turtle Island, uh, what they did was they purchased half of the rights uh, that Clearwater had held. And so from a protest where they held up big signs saying, Mekamal livelihoods, not clear water, billions. The chief of one of these communities, a Membertu community, a man named Terry Paul, stated this is a transformational opportunity for the Mi'kmaq to become significant participants in the commercial fishery through the investment in existing infrastructure. So they now have 50% share in that industry. And he also said, Chief Paul, he said, you have to play to win. And we won. Okay, well, you know, we, we nonviolence folks get a little bit nervous about saying we won. But I do think that this is a really significant development that could radiate out to similar struggles which are going on around the world. So, for example, far across the world in the Russian Arctic, there are, uh, there are people who are resisting a company called Norel Nickel which happens to be one of Elon Musk's endeavors. And it's one of the largest nickel companies in the world. And they are not cooperating with international law. The way they're mining nickel, copper, and cobalt, it's all produced from a kind of ore that contains a large proportion of sulfur. If you've ever worked in a chemistry lab, you know what sulfur dioxide smells like and they emit close to 2 million tons of sulfuric dioxide every year. So uh, a recent research paper on dendro dendroclimatology, the study of the climate's effect on trees, has shown that this is having serious consequences for the forest. So people are now in the stage of making, making demands and we will see where that goes. And uh, on to other news around the world, not too long ago, it was the 125th birthday of Vinoba Bhave, and they have started a website called vinobabhave.org, V-I-N-O-B-A, Vinoba, B-H-A-V-E.org, uh, which has his writings and stories about him and so forth. The reason I mention it is that a, quite a large number of activists, nonviolent activists in India today who are working on land rights in Tamil Nadu and many other issues are really coming uh, to us under Vinoba's umbrella. They, they cut their teeth, they learned how to do nonviolent action with Vinoba Bhavi, who was said to be the closest spiritual successor to Mahatma Gandhi. We will be uh, giving you some of these stories from time to time about Vinoba Bhave and his legacy. One story that I really like because of its relevance for now is that he overcame uh, a group of what we would call terrorists by simply going to them and saying, you turn in your weapons and yes, you will face police, but they will not carry out these attacks on your family and so forth. I guarantee that. And there's an incredible grainy photo of Vinoba sitting there under a tree, looking a little bit like Lord Buddha and these dacoits, you know, unslinging their very expensive rifles and piling them up in front of him. But meanwhile, to come back to the present time, we have a report from a group called Equipe Media, which uh, we're quite familiar with from our film because we have a segment about Sudan. Uh, that comes from them and get, got permission to use it from them. But they also are covering a protest we would like to report to you on from time to time. It's the Sahrawi people uh, in what is now Morocco. And they have started a march toward an area called Guergarat. They're coming from a refugee camp to Guergarat and they are going to organize a sit-in, which may have started by now. They were stopped by some soldiers, but they continued on. And uh, they are offering 
logistical support to dozens of volunteers who were protesting against Morocco's violation of one of the terms of that recent ceasefire. And uh, precisely many stolen goods from the Zahrawi region are going to West African countries. And this is the last uh, truly colonized area, uh, I think, in the world. And it's a sort of struggle that has been going on for a long time and is very nonviolent in character. And uh, th they, uh, this is the last colony in Africa. And this sit in will be joined by Sahrawi civil society and, not, and it is not limited in time. It's gonna go on, as Chief Paul says, until we win. So incidentally, Sahrawi is the name of the people, the culture, but we, we know that region as the Western Sahara. Uh, meanwhile, in Indonesia, uh, there was this uh, jobs law which uh, looked like it was gonna be very destructive, both to labor rights and to the environment. And the president, Jodo Widodo, said way back in July that he was gonna push ahead with this unpopular reform uh, because it would invite foreign investment. And he said, this, this gave me a bit of a chill, <laughs> He said he was no longer constrained by politics because this is his final term. So just imagine how things could have gone here. Uh, so now the main issue is that extractive industries harm the environment and the economy. That's the false dichotomy that we have to get out of people's minds. There are many sound projections by economists that show this, and they also show that the opposite is resoundingly true. That the Green New Deal would actually amount to hundreds, maybe of trillions of dollars gained and saved with the new industry. So, you know, we're always seeing in nonviolence that uh, one of the beauties of nonviolence is you don't have to choose between what is ethical and what is strategic. Uh, this here is quite similar. Similar, you don't have to choose between the environment and the economy. Uh, somehow the universe has been well organized and they can thrive together. So until next broadcast, thank you very much for listening and keep up the good nonviolence struggle.